Welcome home, neighbors. Welcome home, neighbors. Hello, neighbors. We're listening from Arizona, Florida, Maryland, New York, New Jersey, Indianapolis, California, Utah, Michigan, Iowa, Massachusetts, Georgia, Canada. Our home resort is Animal Kingdom, Polynesia, Bay Lake Town, Old Key West, Livia, Boardwalk, Kalani Resort, Hilton, Boulder Ridge, Copper Creek, Grand Floridian, Saratoga Springs, Beach Club, and Wilderness Lodge. And you're listening to And you're listening You're listening, you're listening to, to my, to my, 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 Hey everybody, we are live on the My DVC Points Network and we are recording our podcast for the DVC Newscast. This is episode number 125. You can watch along if you want live, if you're on the Facebook page. If you want, we will also be available as a podcast probably before the end of the weekend. You can look for us on iTunes or anywhere else you get your podcasts. And today I have with me Sue. Hi, Sue. How you doing, Pete? I'm doing really good. Boy, we got a lot of news this week. We do. It had been very slow this last month of September. And, you know, that we had the the D23 event. Some stuff mm-hmm. came out of that. And then since then, not really very much. But a lot of stuff came out this week. Price hikes for one. And we're going to spend some time on that. But also a lot of DVC news. So some fun stuff. But before we get to that, let's just talk about our sponsor this week, and that is Monera Financial. They are the best place that you can go for financing your DVC resale contract. And you can even go to them about financing a a direct contract. If you want to refinance your direct contract, you can get a better interest rate from them than you can from Disney. They typically do not refuse anybody. You have to give them your financial information, obviously, and everything like that, and they'll give you your rate. But so if you're if you're thinking of buying, but you're not sure where you're going to get the money from, this is a place to go. Monero Financial, check them out. With that, we're going to go on. And one other thing, if you have any comments, please feel free to post them. We'll call up the comments as we finish reading stories. We're happy to have people comment and interact with the folks in the community while we're recording these episodes. So with that, we're going to start with a surprise announcement that got sent out to all of us DVC members. Yes, this email was sent out announcing another Moonlight Magic in December. People on on social media had been commenting. They wish that there were more. Well, guess what? Wishes do come true. This holiday season, join us on December 13th, 2023 at Disney's Animal Kingdom theme park for a complimentary after-hours event and enjoy select attractions with shorter-than-usual wait times, character greetings, entertainment, and delectable delights. Members with resort reservations will be able to register on November 28th at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. General reservation is listed as occurring on December 5th at 11 a.m. This came out in an email to all the members this week. And so for those of you who do have reservations for December 13th, remember, mark your calendars, November 28th at 11 a.m. You can register for the Moonlight Magic over at Animal Kingdom. So this is pretty neat that they're doing an additional Moonlight Magic. Yeah, quite a surprise. And I think they've done this once before where they added one, but it was, I think last year they added like a Typhoon Lagoon one or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it was more while they were still doing them, like they added another one in September or something like that. We've never seen one come this late in the season. And especially, you know, at the holiday season, that's kind of neat. It's not a super busy, it's a busy time for DVC, but it's still between Thanksgiving, Christmas, so not the busiest of times, but it's exciting to see. I mean, if someone has a trip planned, it's, it's a nice surprise, you know, make sure to get on there right at 11, right at 11 a.m. <laughs> and get into the queue. I know they're definitely not easy gets for these things. Yeah. A yeah. lot of people, almost everybody that is there is is trying to get them. You know, they allow up to the number of people in your room. So for a studio, it might be four or five. For a two-bedroom, it's going to be eight. I believe if you don't have a reservation, they limit it to the member plus five, I think. I right. think it's a total of six. Nice thing with this, P, is Animal Kingdom will be decorated for the holiday season, but so will the characters. To be able to have some meet and greets and get photos with the characters, they're going to make some pretty nice covers for your Christmas cards next year. I think nobody's nobody's too disappointed about this coming along, except for 
possibly being disappointed that you're not there for it, right? <laughs> this is true. But we've got you, some more great news, and that's going to be the full day park hopping. Yeah, I know. This was, they dropped a bunch of not so great news on October 11th, but before they did that, they brought this news back. Beginning on January 9th, 2024, guests with a ticket with a park hopper benefits or an annual pass will be able to once again visit another theme park at any time of day during park hours. As a reminder, since returning in 2021, park hoppers access has only been available after 2 p.m. each day. Now there will be no more waitings. Guests can decide when it's time to visit another park. Now note for annual pass holders and guests with non-dated tickets, you'll still need to have a park reservation and enter that park first, but will be able to hop as soon as you enter that first park. Dated tickets, I mean, they'd previously announced this. So if you have, if you have tickets that you bought for a trip, one day ticket, a uh, multi-day ticket, those will not require park reservations after January 9th. Annual passes will. And I'm assuming, you know, because I'm an annual pass holder, but also stay on site. Even if you're staying on site, you'll still have to have a park reservation. Right. I'm not sure how long they're going to keep that going. It's starting to seem like, well, what's the point anymore? <laughs> well, the, <laughs> right. the rumor was January 9th. So right. let's hope. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's still good for the most park. Park reservations are available for all four parks every day for annual mm -hmm. pass holders. Our last trip in September, we booked our parks like a week before. And then actually the week of while we were there, we were changing the park like the day before mm -hmm. and things like that. So it's not like it's hard to get into a park. I mean, maybe Thanksgiving, Christmas, those days right. it, it might still fill up, but I don't think it's as big a deal as it was when, because I don't think they're really restricting too much, No, but it's just something to keep in mind. If you are, let's say you have a Epcot reservation as an annual pass holder and you decide, oh, I want to go to Magic Kingdom instead. If you can't change that reservation in the system, you have to enter Epcot mm -hmm. and then then ride the monorail ride. over to Magic yep. Kingdom. It's still not a hundred percent back to normal, but for a lot of people, it is. And this is yeah. this is super good news. Our last trip, I mean, I don't know how it affects you, Sue, as a local. I would assume it does. But our last trip, at least twice, we wanted to hop, and we were just kind of like, "All right, well, we got to wait another hour." And yep. it wasn't like we want to hop at you know nine thirty a.m. or something like that you had some lunch or, or you decide you want to go get lunch in Epcot or something like that. Right. And it's like, well, you, it's yeah. noon. I can't, I got to wait. Yeah. And then you got to try to time it. And then like, even we were trying to use, we had genie plus and I was trying to book something in Epcot and it wouldn't let me book it in Epcot. It wouldn't let me book the genie plus to start before two o'clock. So I wanted to, I wanted to book a, uh, you know, I wanted to book something. Right. And it was like 150 that the that the Genie Plus started. And they're like, no, you can't book that. And I'm like, but I'm going to be there after two. Why can't I book it? <laughs> so we had to wait. And that was really annoying. So I'm really, really happy for this. What about you? I am too, because uh, there are times that I just like to go into Animal Kingdom in the morning and do the safari. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'll do the safari, grab something to eat, but then you want to hop to another park. And I love walking around Epcot, especially the World Showcase, once it first opens. Yep. And because there's very few people there at that time. So you can get a nice walk in, you can leisurely see things. But now it's wait till two o'clock. And so if you go to Animal Kingdom, try and keep yourself occupied during that time especially if, you know, you really don't want to do some of the attractions, you, yeah. you kind of like wait around. Yeah. Or you want to hit, like you want to hit Hollywood studios first thing in the morning to get a rope drop, get a couple right. of early entries or whatever, but then, then you want to go over to Epcot for lunch. Right. You can't. Ceci Armstrong posted a couple comments here. I said, removing the park hopping restrictions was the best news ever for me. Yeah. I would, it was my biggest pet peeve. We are typically two to three parks per day people and would head to a second park as early as 1030. Yeah. Yeah. So for yep. sure. And then she also mentions definitely helps for lunch reservations as well now. Yes. Which is, was an excellent point, right? Yep. And, and we typically do this. If we're going to do a table service, a lot of times we'll do it for lunch because we don't want a big, like one right. of those big meals at dinner. It was a pain because you couldn't. 
because you have to basically book it in the park that you're in. So right. this is this is fantastic news. I, I'm very excited for this. I'm just sorry that it won't affect my next trip. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the nice so. thing is it's it's another step back towards normalcy pre-COVID. And that's what I like to see is it just gives me hope that maybe eventually we'll be back there and you can do things more spontaneously. Oh, for sure. I mean, that's that's the biggest thing. You know, DVC members especially, before we were DVC in our early days, even though we were going like once a year, we just had everything planned and ready to go. And we really knew what we were going to be doing every day. And now it's very different. We we do things by the spur of the moment. And, you know, with all the planning that they've put in place and Genie Plus and all these things, it's, it's, a, hassle. For, it's, it's a hassle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It is. Exactly. It is. So... We got a couple pieces of good news. Now we're going to have to take some of the bad news yep. along with it. And this yep. starts off with the annual pass parking and more price increases at Walt Disney World. While the full day park hopping returns, many prices are also increasing across Walt Disney World. For example, day parking fees for guests at theme parks will increase from $25 to $30 a day. Water park admission is increased by $5 as well, with a new price for non-blackout days of $74 for adults and $68 for children. The annual price passes have also increased, so your Increta Pass goes up $50 to $1,449. The Sorcerer's Pass, the DVC Pass, increases $30 to $999. Is there room for one more? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry right. about that. And the Pirate Pass is up $50 to $799. The Pixie Pass is up $40 to $439. And renewals have also increased, but remain at a 15% discount from the base price. Memory Maker prices are also increasing, with one day price up $6 to $75. And the advanced purchased one up $16 to $185. And during or post trip version is $210, which is an $11 increase from previous pricing. No word on changes to adding Memory Maker to the annual pass yet. There was no announcement of a base one day or multi day ticket increase, but with the variable pricing, how would you even know? <laughs> because it's just so complex. So if you're looking for this information, this was from the blog Mickey. It will be in the show notes as well. But everything is going up. And, you know, we didn't talk about, but they also raised, from what I heard, a lot of food prices are going up, a lot of restaurant prices as well. Not a super surprising time of year for this as it's right. the new fiscal year. I don't know. Any of these strike you as, like, particular surprising well, yeah i you know i'm sorry but it, parking going up even five dollars to to park full day for for thirty dollars while you're still buying a park pass and if you're paying 180 plus dollars for a park pass for a one-day pass plus the parking on top of it plus the increase in food costs it's going to price some people out of the market we went to universal for one day in september and universal is already at 30 are they really? Yeah, they are. So it didn't, when I saw that it went up from 25 to 30, I was like, oh, well, they, they usually go up together. So I guess this is pretty normal. But yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of ridiculous now what they charge for parking. It yeah. really is, you know, that just on top of everything else that they, they get you for and with and with genie plus and you know right <laughs> so far they did not announce any genie plus increase on the east coast we're going to get to disneyland in okay. a little bit <laughs> the one thing i'll say is i wasn't terribly upset by the increase in the annual pass mm -hmm. especially the the sorcerers sorry yeah the sorcerers pass mm -hmm. right the um the one for the dvc $30 increase on $1,000, that's a 3% increase. Right. I mean, if they told me we're only doing 3% increase a year for the next 10 years, I'd be like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the other passes, credit pass went up by $50. That pass is already very expensive. So it's a little disappointing, but it wasn't brutal increases on the annual passes, right. which we have had the occasional like $100 jumps in the past so that wasn't too bad but yeah i i agree the parking it's just like come on 
Yeah. How far can you push this before people are just turned off by fifty dollar a day parking? Or, right. Well, I mean, and and like they didn't say what preferred parking is, but preferred parking was an extra twenty five dollars, so it was fifty. Right. So I don't know if that's going up as well, but. That's a lot. We don't prefer park though. So. <laughs> Neither problem. do I. Actually, we don't pay to park because we have the DVC. Again, one of the good things about being DVC members, yeah. is you don't sweat this so much, but it's still disappointing to see if you got friends that, that, that come with you or something like that, or that are there at the same time and maybe aren't staying on site. It's a bummer. Yeah. Well, at least the good news is that they brought the trams back. So, yes. you know, you might have to, it hurts to pay to park, but at least you're going to get a tram ride to the, to the front of the park. <laughs> so yeah, we were of walking one of our days at Epcot this last trip is a little bit of luck. Cause it's not like come in at a certain time, you know, you're going to be parking here. Right. You can, you can come in, you know, 10 AM and be parked way in the back and then come in at two and be parked right up front. Right. We went to Epcot and we were so far back. We were like on the, in the, far lot i forget which lot it was and we were at the far end of the lot yep. and it was a good 20 minute walk and i was like oh this is awful right to the point that we actually the next day we went to epcot we paid for the preferred parking yeah <laughs> we paid the increase for the preferred parking because i was like i cannot walk that far at the right. end of the after walking around epcot you know for four or five hours so very glad to see those those uh, trams back all right and then not to be outdone <laughs> Disneyland also increased their prices and probably even worse. The Magic Keys all increased. The Inspire, which is the almost completely not blacked out, but not quite, because I think it's still blacked out for Christmas, mm -hmm. is now $16.49 and went up $50. The Believe, which is, you know, most dates went up $150 to $12.49. Enchant went up $150 to $849. And then the, you know, what used to be like the California resident pass, mm -hmm. the Imagine Pass is now $499, went up only $50. So that one's not too bad, but that's still 10% increase. And these other ones, I said $150, you know, as I was just saying, we can't complain too much about a $30 increase. I would be complaining about $150 increase. Right, right. And then Genie Plus is increasing as well. So instead of paying $30 a day, if you pre-buy, so you can pre-buy Genie Plus out there for your length of stay, but it went from $25 to $30 for pre-purchase. And then the minimum price per day in the park, and it can be even higher, is now $30. This is, this is getting out of hand too. Yep. Parking will also be increasing from $30 to $35. Disney World, at least it's $5 cheaper. <laughs> and... The single day and multi day tickets also went up out there. Single day tickets range from now range from 104 to 194. The bottom end actually stayed the same, though my guess is there's probably like 20 days you can use that that ticket. Like they have six yeah. different ticket tiers, and you know another case of they can actually raise prices without raising ticket prices by just shifting what days are what mm -hmm. tiers. But the high end, which is your Christmas and New Year's and that kind of thing, went up by fifteen dollars to one hundred ninety four dollars, wow. one seventy nine. So remember when we were complaining? It's like how can they, how can they go over a hundred dollars for a right. one day ticket? And now we're approaching two hundred dollars yeah. for a one day ticket. Multi day tickets went from a range of two eighty five to four fifteen. That's what they were from for a two day up to a five day. Now they are three fifteen to 480 so a five-day ticket would have gone up about 75 dollars and then park hopper it used to be i believe it used to be 65 dollars regardless of length of stay right and now the longer you stay it ranges from 65 to 75 so i just went and checked because we are going in may and our plan was to do a four-day park hopper and the four-day park hopper ticket is $515 right now for four days. That price, it does not appear to vary by date though yet, which they do at Walt Disney World. Mm. When I looked, I mean, they were only selling out till like mid-April, but any day you picked, it was $515 for a four-day ticket. Oh, I didn't look at Christmas. I picked some random days and it was all the same. So I figure that our trip just got... A little more expensive. Yeah. Yeah. 
Walt Disney World has been struggling. It didn't stop them from raising prices, but they didn't. It doesn't seem like they raised the base ticket price, which does tell me that maybe they're concerned about pricing people out. California does not seem to be worried about that because <laughs> they raised everything. Right, right. So they're not worried about pricing people out. I don't know. Any comments, Sue? I mean, well, you know, the thing is, too, these are ticket prices, granted the annual passes. But if you're doing a package in either place, California, I looked at California, I looked at Walt Disney World, and they are offering room and ticket packages, which mm -hmm. seem pretty reasonable. And I think that's what they're trying to do is to get more people to stay on property. Right. And because they know if, if people stay on property, they're going to eat their meals on property. They'll probably spend a little bit more money. And so it's easier to make it more appealing to people saying, here's the lump sum, and that's your room, that's your tickets. It's just easier in some cases because the prices are lower if you get a package. Yeah. And I mean, I'll say like California is not quite the same, but even there, I'm sure they want to encourage people to stay at one of their properties. But particularly in Florida, as once they took away the, ma the Magical Express, We've been renting cars and we've been eating some meals off property and we've been doing yep. grocery shopping. They have, yep. I mean, I, I can't speak for everybody. They have definitely lost money from the Shidley family. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> for and, sure. And I think yeah. you're right. I think, you know, taking away Magical Express was a disappointment in my eyes because when you had Magical Express, people didn't rent the cars. They were confined to the property unless they wanted to take an Uber and yep. go someplace else. And if they did that, they might do it for one day, but they were basically staying here on Disney property. As soon as you took it away and people had to start uh, renting cars because they wanted to get to the resort when they wanted to, they didn't want to take transportation that was going to stop at four or five different resorts before they got to theirs. And, you know, it, it just, they lost money. I really think that they did. Oh, I, I, I would be surprised if it didn't negatively impact their per person right. earnings. I, it, it didn't make a lot of sense to me because I said we were, we were perfectly happy to be trapped on mm -hmm. site. But once we looked at like having to take, and we're just a family of three, we're not even a big family, but having to pay for that round trip, even if it was only $40 a person, when you're looking at $100, dollars Part of that is I can get some pretty good rental car rates yep. through work, but there's some pretty good rental car rates you can get in Orlando. Right. There's a lot of rental car places, you know, and and then the amount of times because we again, if we're staying on site, like you mentioned, we would Uber once or twice. We might Uber over to let's say we want to have dinner at uh, um, Kona Cafe or something. We might mm -hmm. Uber over there instead of trying to take the buses and right. everything. So we would budget two or three times a trip to Uber. And between that and then the, the shuttle to get there was just like, well, let's just pay for a car. And then, you know, life's so much easier. Right. And as I said, now we, we grocery shop off site. We, st we used to just get a little bit of groceries right there at the property. I don't know. It's crazy. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how this will affect us out in, in California. I do have to say it might affect me getting genie plus because i was thinking originally i was like well maybe i'll do genie plus for the right. four days just to have it but we don't go like hardcore so so i'm starting to think well maybe instead of paying for it all four days maybe we'll just buy it one day or two one days day. or yeah. something like that get all the genie plus rides that you need it for on those days and then the other days do the other things that you don't have to you don't have to wait so long so again, you're raising the prices, but you're losing money. I don't right. know. Right. Interesting. But there are some membership ex extras that are coming during the Christmas parties. We had mentioned before that they were going to have a special event for members at some of the Jollywood Nights. And now they've announced that they're going to have some of, of these events on some of the Thursday nights for Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. So if you're there the nights of November 9th, 16th, and 30th, or December 7th, 14th, or 21st, um, you will have the opportunity for a special member event that's being planned for those nights during the Christmas party. 
They didn't come out with any specifications right now, so we have no idea of exactly what that extra event is. Um, as the Jolly Hollywood Nights at, at Disney Studios, that, those are going to be on December 6th and 20th. And they did announce for that one a unique treat stop during the party and additional details will be revealed soon. So I think they're still constructing it and putting together what it's going to look like. But it's kind of nice that they're going to do something on those Thursday nights. And keep in mind, as a DVC member, some nights, some of these nights are actually a 10% discount off your ticket because a you're dollar. a DVC. I'm sorry, a dollar. Because you're a, dollar, a, yeah. you're a DVC member. Hey. I'll take anything that's extra. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Any discount you can get off those things, right? Yeah, I think this is cool. It's too bad it's only on select nights because, you know, again, you can't necessarily pick and choose which nights you go. Right. So it'd be nice if they did them, if they did it every night instead of just select nights. But select nights are better than nothing. All of these dates, except I believe the November 9th, because very merry party. Are, are still available. So if you were thinking of going, and <laughs> I don't know if this would push you over the edge or not, probably not. But if you're thinking of going, tickets are still available. The first two Jollywood nights have sold out. And I believe yeah. the first one or two of the Mickey's. first couple of the yeah. Mickey's Merry Christmas parties have sold out as well. So I actually thought the Jollywood nights parties were going to sell out quick and they, they haven't. That's kind of interesting. I wonder there's only 10 of them, right? So right. There, there isn't nearly as many of them. I think the Mickey's Very Merry, there's around 20 or maybe a few more than 20. I thought the Jollywood Nights would be like, oh, this is new. It's going to be popular. Right. Maybe the prices are turning people off to these. I don't know. They're very expensive. You know, we just bought tickets for Halloween Horror Nights mm -hmm. for November for my, for my daughter and I to go on November 4th. Hopefully my flight isn't delayed because it's the day we get there. But that was only like a hundred dollars, and <laughs> all the the Mickey's stuff is all you know, one fifty to two hundred. So right, it's kind of interesting to me, you know, seeing how much Universal was charging. Going, oh, that, boy, that's a that's not a bad deal, really. It's still nice, right? It is, and you know, with the I'm going to the Mickey's Very Merry. That's one of my favorite parades to watch. Mm -hmm. You know, I love it, and it's traditional. There's something about it that being back in Connecticut. For many years before I moved down here to Florida, we would watch the, that parade on Christmas Day and mm. just wish that we could be there in person. So that's why I go to the Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. And I love to see the snow. I'm a Floridian now. So to see <laughs> fake snow coming down on Main Street, is it just makes me feel more in the spirit. I don't need to see fake snow. <laughs> <laughs> you see more, the real stuff. I get more than enough real snow. <laughs> I did used to I did used to love it at the Osborne Festival of Lights though. Yes. Yeah. I used I used to love the Osborne Festival of Lights. Uh, that was far and away my favorite Christmas thing. I wish they found a way to bring that back, but no. Yep. Cool stuff. I'm I'm looking forward to Jollywood Nights. It sounds like right in my wheelhouse. I have not done a hard ticket thing for I don't know how long, probably 10 years. Having annual passes to me it's never made sense. I've I, I've been to the Merry Christmas party. I enjoyed it. I've been to the Halloween mm. party. I've enjoyed it. I, ne I never liked it so much that it was like, oh, this has got to be a yearly tradition or everything like that. Right. And at the prices, to me, it just was never, you know, with, with my, with, again, with my annual pass, I'm, you know, I'm paying like $50 a day to get into the park right? or I pay $200 to get in in the evening. It's like, well, I'll just go during the day. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll go bag, buy a bag of candy at uh, Rite Aid. <laughs> <laughs> I like throw the, way the you candy think. at my daughter here. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have to go out and buy Snickerdoodles. Oh yeah! Oh, for Christmas, right? <laughs> Snickerdoodles. Yes, those were good. I will say that. <laughs> yes, yes, they are. I love it. All right. So our last story, and we had a lot of them again. This is just a note for people. The DVC Condo Association meeting is scheduled for Thursday, December 7th, 2023. Mm -hmm. This meeting is set to take place as it usually does at the Contemporaries Convention Center. The DVC Board of Directors will be present to formally address a number of club housekeeping items, including adoption of the annual dues for the 2024 calendar. 
usually the dues drop a couple weeks before. So usually like mid to late November, we find out what they're going to be, right. but this is when they approve them. All DVC owners are invited to attend. So if you're at Disney on the 7th, you also can go to <laughs> Mickey's very Merry Christmas party. Right. The same night, but the meeting is scheduled to begin at 2 p.m. And it typically lasts for about an hour. I heard last year's was about two hours. They did do a little more question and answers last year. But to attend, you have to RSVP via the DVC members only website. So to find that link, click on my DVC and then condo association news and look for a message regarding the 2023 annual meeting. They're not exciting to go to. Usually the biggest announcement is they might talk about upcoming refurbs. So we yeah. might find out something about what's coming next. We know right now that Boardwalk is currently going through a refurb. Vero is getting a refurb. They're actually, we didn't do this as a story, but they're actually going to get the Murphy beds at Vero. Yeah. I'm not sure if they've announced the next one after that. So that's something we might find out on December 7th. Personally, I would like to go to, if I was down there, I would go to this once just to see what it's like. I don't think even if I lived there, I would do it regularly because you basically get a bunch of news that you already know, and right. then they, they ratify the, the stuff, and then they answer a few questions, and someone comes up and goes, why aren't there more Moonlight Magics? Right. <laughs> you, right. Know, you, right. Get, you get people complaining about things that they can't really do much about. Right. I know last year the annual passes hadn't come back, so they had a lot of complaints. People were complaining about the annual passes, and of course their response was, well, we can't control the annual passes because that's not our division. Right. But you get a lot of that kind of answer that like, oh, well, we'd like to do that, but we can't. But they usually don't. Other than the refurbs, they don't usually announce anything big. You won't. They won't announce like Moonlight Magic or anything right. like that. So I wouldn't expect that stuff. But if it's something you're curious to a lot of times they will have like a meet and greet afterwards. So they'll have like mm -hmm. maybe Mickey and Minnie out and you can get your photos with them. And you can also, a lot of times they'll have like a, what do you call little, it? Like a little uh, refreshments. Yeah. Like refreshment. Right. And they'll have some of the directors, the DVC directors there that you can go up to and, you know, talk to them, talk to them. Yeah. But again, you can't get too unhinged or the Mickey security is going to come out and <laughs> drag you off. <laughs> Well, you know, you did bring up a good point, though. There are a lot of people that when they do go there and the question and the answer period comes up, they bring up things that really DVC has no control over. Yeah. Ticketing has control over them or the parks have control over them. Yeah. DVC doesn't. I mean, if you want to bring up questions about the resorts, the refurbishments, point charts, whatever it is that pertains directly to DVC. But if you bring up the perks and stuff that are out there, they have no control over those. They can't make your annual pass cost less. They just can't do that. Something that a lot of people don't realize, and that's when they get up and they say, you know, well, I'm sorry, but we have no control over that. And then people get a little miffed about it, but they're just telling it like it is. It, it, it is what it is. Yeah. And you know, one thing, and this is just being honest, I mean, we all would like to see more benefits and everything like that, but the reason you're buying into DVC is to get a discounted room. Correct. Right? Yep. That's the benefit of DVC is the discounted room at a right. deluxe resort. Everything else is gravy. Yes. You know, and we can complain when something isn't there that was there, but in the end, as long as you got that room, that's right. what you paid for. So, And that's what's in the contract. It, it states yep. right in there that any member benefits or perks are for marketing purposes only. Mm -hmm. And they can be eliminated or they can be changed at any time. So all you, when you're buying into DVC, that's all you're buying is you are buying a discounted room, a great room for mm -hmm. a discounted price over its lifetime. That's yep. it. Yep. All right. Let me get one comment from Linda. And Linda said, you two are so much fun. <laughs> thanks oh, for all thanks. the new info. Thanks, Linda. It's glad, glad to hear. We don't like each us. other, by the way. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can tell. Can't stand each other. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. <laughs> so thanks, Linda. Appreciate yeah, it. Thank you very much. And so with that, I think we're going to wrap things up. The show ran a little long because we had a lot of news. I'll be down there in November 4th to the 13th. If you go to the My DVC Points 
If you go to mydvcpoints.com slash events, Chad is hosting a couple of events yeah. the over the Veterans Day weekend. I think it's like the 10th, 11th, and 12th, Friday, Saturday, Sunday of that weekend. So if you're interested in any kind of get together, a bunch of us will also be at the Jollywood night, but that event is again, again, sold out. But what about you, Sue? You got any upcoming plans that are exciting going to the parks or cruise well, or anything? Yep. I'm actually, I'm going to be in the, the parks. I've got a reservation at Bay Lake on the 31st of October on oh, Halloween night Halloween. Mm -hmm. so that I can see the fireworks from a distance and enjoy it. And then the next day I go over to the campground over into one of the log cabins for a couple of nights. I oh, love nice. being over there during Halloween because the people who have all of their, their tents and their RVs, my gosh, do they decorate. And I just yeah. love walking through there. Once we take over, DVC takes over the, the cabins over there. I'll still be going. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm points. points. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. So with that, I just want to thank our sponsors, the DVC Resale Market, DVC Rental Store, and Monera Financial for their support of the My DVC Points platform. And with that, we're going to say so long, everybody. Until next time. So long. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, please watch your head and step as you exit and take small children by the hand. Aw, oh, cheer up, Dad. You know we'll come back. With DVC. My DVC Points is an unofficial Disney-inspired podcast created by fans of Disney Vacation Club. The thoughts expressed in this podcast are personal opinions and personal experiences. My DVC Points is not affiliated with Disney Vacation Club, the Walt Disney Companies, or any subsidiaries. We encourage listeners to contact their DVC guide or member services for official DVC policies.